I am very, very happy today because the packages that I've been waiting for, for what feels like forever, have finally arrived. So if you haven't seen the video where I spend over $200 on books, make sure to give it some love because I have to make back the money somehow. <laughs> But we will think about that later. And by later, I mean after I've opened after I've opened my packages because I am so happy about this. I cannot wait another second to open these. Please join me in opening up these bundles of joy and yeah, just like sit back, relax, enjoy this wild ride. I am so happy. I'm going to open these now and I'm going to start with this one because I don't know if I ordered this like I'm pretty sure I ordered these two but this one it could go either way so I want to start with the mystery package first and it's really really lightweight it literally feels like nothing is inside okay there is something inside good to know Oh, it's a Funko Pop. They always feel so light. I should have known. Hey, girly, I just wanted you to know that you're killing it. Oh, just like Mikasa. Is this Mikasa? <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. And that I absolutely adore your videos. Keep trekking on from Sarah. Aww. Sarah, you absolute legend. I love you for this. I, I am so in love with you right now. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm in love with her. I'm in love with Mikasa because yes, Mikasa from Attack on Titan. She is one of the most iconic, one of the most badass characters in the Attack on Titan franchise, the Attack on Titan series. I love Mikasa. Every time that she's on the page, I'm just drooling because I'm so in love with her. And I finally get to have her Funko Pop and it's all thanks to Sarah. Sarah, you absolute icon. Thank you so much for making my day. Oh my God. Thank you. Oh my God. She is stunning. I don't even want to take her out of the box, but she does need to go next to Levi. Oh, my Attack on Titan shelf is gonna look so sexy. Thank you so much. Oh my God. I'm gonna cherish this for the rest of my life. I love you. <laughs> that was a wonderful way to start this unboxing. So Sarah, if you're watching this, I hope you're having the loveliest day because you deserve it. I hope your day is filled with sunshine and rainbows and I hope you enjoy this vlog. So let's continue with this book depository package. I am very, very excited for this one because the bell jar, the collector's edition or like the special anniversary edition is here. And I've seen it in person when I was back in Taiwan. I saw it and it was love at first sight. And now I get to own it and oh my God, like I cannot wait to actually hold it in my hand. Add it to my bookshelf. Are we ready for this? I don't think I'm ready. I don't think I'll ever be ready, but let's go. Okay, here we go. Oh, I completely forgot I ordered Crime and Punishment. <laughs> Yeah, I ordered Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. It's in an okay condition. You know, it's not perfect, but I accept it. And this is a lot smaller than I remember it being, but hey, you get bonus points for being floppy. So this is apparently Dostoevsky's finest masterpiece, according to John Bailey. So there we go. I did read the first couple of chapters of Crime and Punishment because a friend of mine, when I went to visit her in Miami, she had it and I was like, hey, I might as well start this classic randomly. And I actually really vibed with the character and like the atmosphere of the whole book. So I just needed to have it. And I'm really, really excited to read this. Some people actually told me that I should read this one before I read The Brothers Karamazov. Karamazov? I'm so sorry, you guys have told me so many times in the comments how to pronounce it, but when I need it the most, like when I need to know how to pronounce it, my brain just turns off. I'm so, so sorry. But basically, a lot of people have also told me that I should definitely read Crime and Punishment before I read that one, because it's a better introduction into Dostoevsky's writing and the way that he likes to tell his stories. So I thought I would follow your guys' advice and yeah, I'm excited. I'm really happy. I still can't believe it took me so long to realize that there is an I in this cover. 
Yeah, that was a plot twist that I did not see coming. But there we go, crime and punishment. 656 pages, that is so doable. Like literally anything that's under 1000 pages, I just look at it like it's a little book now. You know what I mean? Like I've leveled up in terms of literature and my brain is so big that an 800 page book is just, it's a small book for me now. <laughs> So anyways, that is the first book that I got from Book Depository and the next one is Fangs by Sarah Anderson. I have already read this, but I loved it so so much I just wanted a copy for myself because I know I'm going to be rereading this every October My Halloween would not be complete without Fangs and this lovely quirky story between a vampire and a werewolf And also it's great that I get to support the author because she is just so incredibly talented and she brought me so much joy and happiness with her stories. I might as well give her something back by supporting her and getting a copy. So there we go, Fangs, this gorgeous, gorgeous edition. It's cloth bound as well. I'm obsessed. I love it so much. Okay, actually, it's quite impossible to do a flip through. I love them. I love them so much. <laughs> oh, it's a Heartstopper bookmark. This is 10 times better than the Colleen Hoover bookmark that I got twice. So I'm really happy with this bookmark. It's adorable. Oh, the moment we have all been waiting for. Oh my gosh, she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. It's The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This gorgeous illustrated edition. According to Joyce Carol Oates, it's a near perfect work of art. Oh my God. I'm gonna have to reread The Bell Jar. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh my god, I love this type of illustration. Look, this is gorgeous. This is stunning, actually. This is beautiful. I am so, I regret absolutely nothing. <gasps> oh my god, I know what scene this is. Oh, I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. I love that the illustrations get darker and darker the further in you get into the book. I am absolutely in love with this. This needs to be on full display on my bookshelves. I don't have the space for it, but I will make the space because it's the least that I can do for this gorgeous. <gasps> Look. Yeah. Yeah, this needs to be on display on my bookshelves. Like there's just no question about it. <sighs> The Bell Jar, the gorgeous edition of The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Look at her, wow. I'm, I'm obsessed, wow, yeah. So, The Bell Jar, Sylvia Plath. Okay, and now, <laughs> this comically huge box that is obviously from Right Stuff. I hope you're a manga fan because that's basically what's in this box. If you're not a manga fan, what are you doing? Come on, come on. It's so easy, just pick up your very first manga. It could be Fullmetal Alchemist, definitely recommend. It could be Death Note, that's a good one, a classic, never gets old. You could also go for Demon Slayer, which is very accessible. Are we ready? I don't think you're ready. I already see one. This is Junji Ito's Cat Diary. Here we go. I did end up getting the collector's edition because once again, I am a collector. So why wouldn't I get the collector's edition? Collectors get collector's editions. So, master of Japanese horror manga, Junji Ito presents a series of hysterical tales of chronicling his real life trials and tribulations of becoming a cat owner. I think this is going to be a little bit more comedy than horror, which is going to be very interesting because I've never considered Junji Ito as a comedy artist, so I guess there's a first time for everything. And I'm excited to see how he's going to pull this off. Despite being a dog person, Jae-kun finds himself persuaded, <laughs> persuaded, nice, by their odd cuteness and thus begins his comedic struggle to gain the affection of his new feline friends. Oh, well, he already made me laugh with the description. So maybe, maybe this is gonna be good. I mean, it should be good. I paid like $20 for this. <laughs> I regret nothing. Once again, I regret nothing. Oh, whew, whew, okay. Oh, 
Okay, so this is volume eight and nine of Chainsaw Man. Look at them in all of their glory. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Can you tell I'm fully whipped for these characters? Yeah. Oh my god, look at them! All packaged together. That's what I love to see. Oh, literally, how are they so perfect? This is why I love right stuff. Look at what I'm doing for you. I did this for you and it's not even sponsored. Like, come on now. Everybody go write to write stuff that they should sponsor Throne of Pages. They probably don't even know what that is. They probably don't even know what a booktuber is. But please, everybody go write to write stuff. I need to be sponsored by them. <laughs> that is like my dream sponsorship for 2020. 23 just being sponsored by right stuff look at them i am the proud owner of all of the volumes of chainsaw man look at them being so gorgeous being so beautiful i am obsessed <laughs> i am so in love and i haven't like i just i <laughs> i am so happy right now oh my god like i am i'm trembling like, I have so much happiness coursing through my veins that I'm literally trembling. Yeah, yeah, sounds about right. How about we see these babies individually? I am very, very excited. Let's do this. Number one, of course, iconic, beautiful, stunning. And then in the back, of course, we have Denji. In volume two, we have power in the cover. In the back, we have power with her cat, <laughs> her iconic cat. We love to see it. She looks gorgeous in the back, wow. Beautiful. I love these color palettes. It's giving everything. Oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Look at him. Look at this. Ooh, I love this cover. <gasps> wow. This is volume five. Stunning, beautiful, iconic battle between Katana and Chainsaw. Ma'am, are you okay? This is volume six. Honestly, do I know you? I feel like I don't know you. <laughs> Oh, have I mentioned how I absolutely adore Makima? Like, I love her character. She is, she is the definition of the woman I want to be. <laughs> I love her, like, I love her. I love how mysterious she is. I love how I don't really quite know if she is good or bad. It's just, she makes me feel things, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then finally we have volume 11 with Denji in the cover. And we also have him in the back, but he's shirtless, topless. We love to see it. Those are the 11 volumes of Chainsaw Man that I am now the proud owner of. Oh my goodness, I'm literally so happy right now. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a random 24 hour readathon so that I can just binge read every single one of these volumes back to back. That literally sounds like heaven. That is the recipe to achieve immediate happiness. So yeah, I'm just really happy with this. And also the other books that I've received, hold up. These are all of the new books that I have acquired. And it's definitely an interesting collection of books because we have some manga, we have some classic literature, we have graphic novels, we have another classic literature, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, and we have some horror comedy manga. So it's a very eclectic group of books, but I could not be happier. I'm so, so happy with every single one of them. Once again, I have no idea where I'm going to be putting these because my bookshelves are just filled to the brim. So I'm going to have to be, you know, playing some Tetris with my shelves, which is always fun, you know? Who doesn't love a good game of bookshelf Tetris? So yeah, I'm going to go see where I'm gonna put these books for the time being. Oh my God, of course, and of course, 
the star of the show, Mikasa. Anyways, I love the world. The world is very beautiful to me right now, and I hope it's beautiful to you too. If you're struggling at the moment, if you're having a bad day, if you just woke up on the wrong side of the bed today, I hope this vlog finds you at the perfect time. I hope you, you know, you can rest a little bit here, just kind of like a rest stop in between the things you need to do today. I'm going to be trying my hardest to make this vlog cozy and fun and the best for you guys. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the vlog and I will talk to you later. This is my classics and manga on red shelf. As you can see, I have a bunch of classics over here and I do have to add Crime and Punishment. So I think I'm just gonna add this up here because there's honestly just no more space. So there we go, beautiful. Then we have the 11 volumes of Chainsaw Man. God, I love you. But then here's the thing. Oh, I can just put Jujutsu Kaisen up here too. Um, <laughs> Attack on Titan does not fit though, obviously, because it's too big. Uh, so then what do I do with Attack on Titan? Should I just put it? It doesn't fit! Oh no! Well, I am going to be starting this one soon, so I could just take it off. And then I would have space. It just means I have to read books faster, that's all it means. <laughs> I took out the complete poems of Emily Dickinson because I am going to literally be starting this today. So, you know, I have no idea when I'm going to be finishing this, if I'm even going to be finishing this, but hey, we have to start somewhere. So yeah, the poems of Emily Dickinson. This is my new unread shelf of manga and classics. I do have some other ones down there. But yeah, I mean, I guess I made them all fit and that's what matters, so yeah.
hi, 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 hi. I've just been answering a few comments from my new vlog that I just uploaded today. So if you haven't seen that one, I'll link it up here. It's a good one and it's actually the first one of 2023. And it just made me so happy to be back. It made me excited to create again. So I'm really happy with that vlog and if you watched it, I hope you enjoyed. Today is March 1st and for some reason I'm suddenly being drowned by the amount of books that I'm reading. It's crazy, this was not planned. I just, I kept on starting books without realizing just how many I was currently in the middle of. So I thought it was about time that I did a cute little reading update for you guys because I mean, I have to tell someone about all of these books, otherwise I'm just gonna forget about them. <laughs> <laughs> One of the books that I mentioned in the previous vlog was Severance, written by Ling Ma, and I haven't finished it yet. I'm currently on chapter 6, which is page 81, and I do want to reach the 100 page mark today, so that's definitely something that I'm going to be doing after I finish another episode of Friends. I'm currently on season 5, if you were wondering. After I finish one more episode, I promise, just one more episode, I'm going to sit my butt down and read 19 pages of severance i am really enjoying it but i wouldn't trust that one review that was like the office meets the leftovers i think it only compared it to the office because this one woman that we're following candace she works in this office when everything just starts to go down also there's no zombies it's more like people that die but they remain alive but they're not violent like when you think zombies you think the walking dead you think the last of us you think warm bodies but it, they're not violent it's just kind of like they're there and even though they're dead their lizard brain is still there and they're still functioning to some extent but it's not really living and these people are called the fevered our main character candace is not one of the fevered she's just like one of the last survivors on earth and she is fleeing new york when she meets up with this group of people that are driving towards this place where it's like safer there's like you know, a community there, and they're all on their way there. While they're making their way there, Candace is just telling us about how life used to be for her, what she used to do before the world fell apart and before the internet broke down. So it's kind of like this back and forth type of narrative. And even though it's very dry, like it's not a very fun book, but I'm still having quite a lot of fun because it's very interesting and I'm really enjoying the writing style. I don't want you guys to go into it if you do decide to pick this one up. I don't want you to go into it thinking, oh, this is gonna have a Michael Scott character or this is gonna have a Dwight or a Jim and Pam because it's not. It's just not, which is okay, but I just wish they wouldn't have promoted it like that. I don't even know if it was a promotion, but they did, like someone did review it like that and that just kind of gave me this certain idea of what the story was going to be and it was very far off so that's severance and then i also started another book that i still can't believe i'm actually reading it's been on my bookshelf for so long now and every time i look at it i'm just like i'm never going to read this why did i ever buy this but fortunately i have a very good friend some would even say a soulmate who also bought this book with me and We've decided to read this together, like during FaceTime, so you know, we're actively supporting each other and we started it officially. The book I'm talking about is The Complete Poems of Emily Dickinson. This has all 1,700 and something poems of Miss Emily Dickinson and this was very intimidating because the few times that I had flipped through it, I read a random poem and i had no idea what it was talking about but the first time that i mentioned this and the first time that i talked about how intimidating this book was i got so many comments about how with poetry and especially with emily dickinson you should just let the poems flow through you you shouldn't try to understand every single thing or every single poem you should just try and sit with them and just try and hear what the poem is trying to tell you and i think 
before I had a very analytical way of reading poetry I was always like okay what is the meaning behind this color what is the meaning behind this word and sometimes it's okay to read poetry like that if that's the way that you want to go but I wanted more of an emotional a more spiritual experience when I was reading poetry so a lot of those comments that you guys sent in actually helped me in getting excited all over again to pick this book up and now that I'm buddy reading this with my friend Shelby it just it feels like the stars are aligning and it feels like the perfect time to pick this up and as you can see we have you know, our daily goals. We are trying to read 50 poems a day and some poems are like four lines long. So it's not as much as it sounds, like 50 poems sounds kind of intense, but it's really not. Like some poems are very short, look at this. So it's okay, okay, don't worry about it. I'm taking my time with them and some poems are okay. Some poems I'm like, I don't really know what you were trying to do with that, but I'll just accept it and move on. But then there are some poems that I have to reread over and over again because I loved them. Like they they really hit that spot that I didn't even know I had. They really scratch my brain in the best way possible. They make my brain go brr. And <laughs> I really enjoy those poems. So it's been an interesting experience so far. We are 73 pages in, we've read 150 poems, and it's been good. It's been a good experience. It's not as scary as I thought it would be. I thought there would be like a lot of words that I didn't know the meaning of, and even though there have been, you know, a few words that I did have to stop and Google because I was just like, I've never heard this word ever in my life. Even though I do have some of those moments, the overall experience of reading this collection has been very beautiful and very spiritual and emotional and yeah, I'm just appreciating the reading experience at the moment. I'm not trying to force anything and it's been great. It's been working for me. I mean, it's <laughs> this is literally only the second day of us reading, so maybe I'm just being overly optimistic but i'm liking it so far and i hope it stays that way i'll definitely be updating you guys as we go according to our very wonky math if we manage to read 50 poems every day we'll be finishing this in 35 days yeah we'll just see because maybe some days we won't have time maybe other times we'll read more than 50 it's up to us and literally nobody is timing us so it's okay it's just kind of like to have a goal but it's okay if we don't reach it so Shelby if you're watching this don't feel guilty if you can't read 50 poems a day so that is Emily Dickinson and then I am also going to start another classic it's not intimidating but actually no that's it it's not intimidating I'm just really excited to read this one and I have unofficially read the first four chapters already a few months back but since i didn't have my own copy i was never able to fully start the book but now that i do i can officially start reading crime and punishment written by dostoevsky as you saw in the previous clip i already divided our daily goals because yes i am also buddy reading this with a group of my friends i've learned that buddy reading classics just works for me you know it's not for everybody some people just prefer to read them on their own time and that's okay too but for me especially with the people that i'm reading it with if you're watching this i love you both it just works for us and i really love the dynamic that we have when we're discussing the classics and it's just really fun so i am very very excited to jump right into the world of crime and punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. From the few chapters that I read, I do remember that in this book we're following a man who is struggling financially and physically as well. Like his life is just not going the way that he wanted it to. Also, he's just kind of like losing it. I think a little bit like he's going a little bit insane because he barely has anything to eat and the quality of life that he leads is just not good. And because of this, he starts to consider 
that maybe committing a crime is not that bad. This man, I think he's planning on stealing from this old woman that he knows and he he starts planning the whole thing but he's like debating if he should really do this because you know you can never go back from committing a crime i think it's not stealing from her i think it's actually like killing the woman and taking all of her money so that could be a little more intense <laughs> But yeah, that is sort of what I remember from the few chapters that I read of Crime and Punishment. And those few chapters were really, really good. Like, I liked the writing style, I liked the character, and I liked his conflict between being a good person and having to survive. So I think I'm going to really enjoy this one, and I am very excited. But... <laughs> Apart from these three wonderful books that I am currently in the middle of, I am also going to start another one and I need to go get it, so BRB. 12 seconds later. Apart from those three books, I'm also going to be starting The Stolen Air, written by Holly Black. Per last week's vlog, I did reread the Cruel Prince trilogy in order to get to The Stolen Air. Now, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to finish this this week, but that is the goal, that is the dream. This has, let us see, 352 pages. That is adorable. I'm not sure what that is. Is that like a little fox? I don't know, but I love her. I love him, I love it. I love them. <laughs> so yes, 352 pages. I mean, I'm well acquainted with Holly Black's writing, so I feel like this is going to go by a lot faster than I think it will but also i want to take my time with it because this is a duology so having to wait for the second book is going to be a little bit hard for me i'm not known for my patience you know what i mean like i can wait but i'm not going to be happy about it so i want to take my good old time with this one and if i don't finish it this week then hey that just means more time with these characters that i'll hopefully love maybe we'll even get a jude and Carden cameo would that be too much to ask oh okay anyways these are my reading plans for this week um let me know in the comments below what you're currently reading as you can see i don't think i'll have time to do well anything <laughs> besides reading i don't think i'm going to have time to watch my animes or start any new k-dramas so this week is literally going to be a week full of readings and hopefully all of these are going to be amazing. Obviously, I'm not going to be finishing the two in the middle because that would just be preposterous and I don't want to speed read any of these books. These two are going to be my main goals for the week and hopefully I'll enjoy them. I'm really, really excited about The Stolen Air, but I've already heard some people tell me to lower my expectations. So I don't know what to expect from this one, but hey, I'm open. I'm open to the experience. Hopefully I'll like it. And if I don't, at least it matches the aesthetic of the other three books. You know what I mean? Like, we have to find the silver lining somewhere. Those are all of my reading updates. Now I think I'm going to finish my episode of Friends and then I'm gonna sit down and read Severance. I hope you're having the loveliest day so far and I will talk to you later.
hello my friends. I hope you're doing wonderful tonight in this fine evening. I hope you've been enjoying the vlog so far. I've just been having a lot of fun making this vlog because I've just been filling it up with things that make me happy like reading and baking and you know organizing my bookshelves. It's just it's a compilation of things that have made me happy this week. So hopefully a little bit of the happiness that I've been feeling this week is transmitted to you guys who are watching this video. I do have a little post-it with me tonight because I have a couple of things that I want to talk about and I just really didn't want to forget about them. And the very first one is something that I have noticed recently and that is that before when I used to read classic literature and I I came upon words that I didn't know the meaning of I used to feel really embarrassed like I was by myself but I still felt really ashamed that I didn't know what the word meant and that I had to stop and look for the meaning to fully understand what was going on lately I've realized that instead of feeling embarrassed for not knowing what this word means and just like berating myself for not being smart enough I think it was a little bit silly of me to expect to know every single word that was out there now when I come across a word that I don't know I see it more of as a learning opportunity a learning experience and I'm excited whenever I find a new word because it's like yes my inner dictionary is growing and I don't know I really wanted to share that because I know that for a lot of you guys who are watching me English is not your first language and I mean just like me my first language is Spanish hi if you didn't know I'm Dominican and sometimes it can be discouraging when you're reading a book and you come across a lot of words that you don't understand and i just wanted to let you guys know that that is completely normal you don't have to feel ashamed you don't have to feel stupid you don't have to feel like that book is just too smart for you you have to accept the fact that sometimes reading is a learning curve and you are not going to know every single word in the english dictionary and that is okay um so just try and have fun with it you know like come up with little different ways to write the definitions and the margins of the books come up with maybe like a little index of new words at the end of every book that you read make it fun don't be so mean to yourself and give yourself space to grow is basically what i'm trying to say so yeah i just wanted to share that because i know a lot of you struggle sometimes and the camera is not even focusing on me <laughs> that is so rude look i'm having a moment with you guys and the camera is not even focusing on me the camera prefers to look at my books apparently i'm so sorry about that hey stop doing that <laughs> i know it's really random but i just wanted to share it with you guys because i've been there and sometimes it's hard but just take it day by day and you'll be okay. <laughs> the other thing that I really wanted to talk to you guys about is the response to my Monte Cristo vlog. <laughs> Listen, I will be honest, I was not expecting that sort of response to that video. I was extremely proud of it, don't get me wrong. I put my blood and sweat and tears into that vlog and I am so, so proud of it but I didn't think that a lot of people would care for it, maybe? I don't know if that's the right word, but the amount of people that have tagged me either on YouTube comments or on Instagram stories saying that I've inspired them to pick up Monte Cristo and that now they're excited to try out this classic even though it was super intimidating to them at first but because of my video they're giving it a chance they're stepping out of their comfort zone and they're giving it a try and it's all thanks to me and it's literally like I don't sometimes it baffles me <laughs> No, it really does. Sometimes it baffles me that people trust me enough to go out and buy a 1,000 page classic just because I said it was really good. I don't know, like that literally just blows my mind. I'm, yeah. And every time that somebody tags me on an Instagram story, it fills my whole body, my whole heart, my whole soul with so much happiness and so much serotonin. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because I think a major reason that I've been so happy this week is because of you, like, and I'm not even trying to be cheesy, I just mean that from the bottom of my heart. The messages that you've been sending me, the comments that you've been leaving on my videos, it just means the absolute world to me. I'm so sorry, and this is why I don't vlog at night because I just get extremely sentimental. <laughs> I'm just feeling extremely emotional in the best way possible tonight and I wanted to share it with you guys. If this week has been hard for you, 
I just hope that you know you have somebody in your corner and that somebody is me. I'm always going to be rooting for you and when you don't believe in yourself, I'll believe in you for the both of us. With all of this cheesiness out of the way i think i'm gonna go back to editing because yes i do need to finish this vlog i'm loving it though i hope you guys are enjoying it how many times have i said that already anyways <laughs> i'm gonna go back to editing but i hope you're having a fantastic day whenever you're watching this and i will talk to you guys later Today is Sunday and I thought it was the perfect time to do some final reading updates and just talk to you guys about my week and what I've done because apparently this week has been fully booked. I don't remember the last time that I've spent so much time continuously reading and it's just been crazy because I'm not even doing a challenge. I'm just enjoying these books so so much that it's hard for me to put them down starting with crime and punishment by fyodor dostoevsky this has honestly surprised me the most because i wasn't expecting to love this as much as i am the first day that i picked this up which i think was three days ago i read a hundred pages and that may not seem like a lot but in terms of classic literature a hundred pages usually takes me a while you know okay you know everybody has a different reading speed especially when it comes to classic literature but i just was not expecting to read this as fast as i did before we even started we had said that we would be reading three chapters every day and some of these chapters are really long so three chapters felt a little bit impossible at first because I just kept looking at how many pages those first three chapters were and I'm like this is impossible like how am I ever going to read three chapters of this book in one day suddenly I reached part one of crime and punishment which is like 
in page 106. Yeah, page 106 is the end of part one. And I reached that in day one of reading Crime and Punishment. And this is the third day that I've been reading Crime and Punishment. And I just reached part four. So I don't know what's going on, but this book is just so addictive. It's so entertaining and it's so fun to see our main character slow no actually not slowly rapidly descend into madness it's unbearable for me to put this book down because i'm just having the time of my life reading this book honestly like i'm obsessed with dostoevsky's writing style i love the atmosphere of the story i love how dark it is i love how our character is constantly sleeping <laughs> this is probably my favorite page so far because i added a little meme <laughs> it's literally one of my favorite pages that i've ever annotated it is so so fun once again the experience of buddy reading this with my friends has elevated this reading journey by a thousand by a million and i'm currently on page let's see 331 Oh my goodness, so I'm already halfway through Crime and Punishment. I don't know how to explain this except for the fact that this writing is beautiful. It's haunting. Sometimes it's so dark and so depressing, but at the same time, it's highly relatable. And at times I'm like a little bit confused because I'm like, why am I relating to a literal criminal, to a literal murderer? But sometimes he says some things or he does certain actions that i'm like i've done this before in my life or i've thought this way before i don't know if i should be worried about the fact that i'm relating to our main character and like please let me know if i should be looking into psychologists because it's worrisome but it's also fun so i don't know my journey with crime and punishment has been absolutely brilliant i cannot wait to keep on reading and yeah, it's just been wonderful. I surprised myself by how fast I fell in love with this book and just how much I'm enjoying it in general. So yeah, I just had to talk about this book with you guys because so many things are going on. Our character is completely cracked to the max. He is the definition of unhinged and deranged. If you love Light Yagami from Death Note, you're going to love our main character in Crime and Punishment. Yeah, it's just giving Death Note at times, and I'm like, I love this comparison. I love that my brain decided to mix in Death Note and Crime and Punishment. It just feels right, you know what I mean? It's also a tiny bit reminiscent of the picture of Dorian Gray, especially to the character of Lord Henry, and also at times Dorian Gray. If you don't know, the picture of Dorian Gray is one of my all-time favorite classics, so the fact that I can find similarities between these two is just incredible. And overall, I'm just really, really happy with this. I still haven't added the tabs, but trust me, I will. I just don't want to stop my reading and put the tab in. So I'm going to do that after it's fully annotated. In terms of The Stolen Air, I did start it but I didn't finish it because I wasn't expecting to love Crime and Punishment so much and I wasn't expecting for this to grip my attention as much as it did. So I only actually managed to read the first two chapters of The Stolen Air, which isn't even page 50. I'm like 30 pages in, I think. I basically know nothing, but from what I've read, we've already been introduced to our main character, Ren, and I like that she's not very similar to Jude because something that happened to me when I read Holly Black's other book, which is Book of Night, the main character in that book really reminded me of Jude and that sort of made me not enjoy the book because it was really reminiscent of things that Holly Black has done before. So I'm really relieved and I'm excited to see that Ren is sort of like this fresh character and she brings her own personality into this book. I can't wait to get to know her more and I can't wait to see her meet Oak, which is, of course, the other main character in this book. This is definitely going to be my priority for next week, but yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be finishing this 
today or tomorrow, but I'm okay with that. And for the complete poems of Emily Dickinson, I am currently on page 225. I've done a fair few of annotations and I do have a couple of favorite poems. You know, it's definitely not as intimidating as I thought it would be and that's such a relief. And I've just been having fun reading these poems. Some I get, some I don't, and some just completely restructure my brain chemistry. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with not understanding every single thing that is said. I'm completely fine with letting these poems come and go through my brain and just see which ones are going to stick. Some really hit the spot and sometimes I'm like, whoa, like this is actually beautiful. It's just been a really wonderful experience and I'm so happy that I'm buddy reading this with my friend Shelby because it just, it would not be the same. We tried not reading this together and it just didn't hit. It just didn't, you know what I mean? I'm so grateful to have Shelby as a friend and as a friend that reads because life-changing. Get yourself a friend that reads with you through FaceTime. That's all I'm saying. It'll change your life. Those are all of the reading updates that I have for you guys. And I think because it is Sunday and because I do have to edit this vlog at one point in my life, I think this is going to be the end of this vlog. Thank you so much for your support and your love. Thank you for being here. I just wanted to thank you guys for wanting to be a part of this little corner of the internet with me. And once again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment. It really helps my channel out and it helps me out. So I would really, really appreciate it. I also have a Patreon where we do monthly book clubs and we also do reading sprints. I also have some exclusive content for you guys. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, the link is down below as always. I really hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And if you're still here, leave this emoji in the comments below so that I know that you stay until the end and you're a true simp. I love you all so very much and I will see you next time. Bye! Hey Jimmy, you nice. Keep going.